Hi, my name is Beth Heidern. I'm the executive director here at the Racine Zoo. And today's episode of Racine Zoo to You, we're gonna be talking about oceans, lakes, our African penguins. And people go, really, you're gonna talk about ocean things at a zoo? Well, yes, everything, the entire ecosystems are connected, intertwined with each other. So what happens here at the zoo and by our magnificent lake, Michigan, will and can affect the ocean. So we need to be protective of all of our water resources. We are fortunate here at the Racine Zoo to be connected to Lake Michigan, which is one of five lakes. And together, those five lakes make the largest freshwater surface in the world. We are so fortunate that our location is right next to this wonderful lake. Now, we talk about oceans a little bit, and we still have to be stewards of the planet and protect all of our waterways. We are fortunate to have African penguins here at the Racine Zoo. They are one of the original 10 signature species for the SAFE program, and that stands for Saving Animals from Extinction. When I first started here at the Racine Zoo in 20, 2015, we had six penguins, awesome animals, but they weren't breeding and we were concerned about that. So working with the scientists with SSP, which is Species Survival Plan, they have worked out the formula that says, really, you need 10 animals for a colony. So we were able to acquire four more African penguins, and within six months of that, what do we have? Two babies. We were very fortunate, and this past year, we had another baby. So we've got the right mix here. Our African penguins are amazing. We want to make sure we conserve water as well from the ocean, as well as our wonderful lake. This is going to be an awesome episode. Thank you. Hi, I'm Angie Sager, the animal care supervisor and one of the primary penguin specialists here at the Racine Zoo. I've worked here for over 10 years and been taking care of these penguins almost that whole time. Before I started here, I worked at the Bay Beach Wildlife Sanctuary in Green Bay, as well as at the farm at the Milwaukee Zoo. I also did an internship at Oceans of Fun and an internship here at the Racine Zoo before I started as a full-time keeper. But back to our penguins. We have African penguins. Most people think that all penguin species live in cold climates. In fact, most of the 17 penguin species live in warmer weather climates. All penguins live in the Southern Hemisphere and they're found on Antarctica, Australia, South America, South Africa, and a lot of the other islands down in the Southern Hemisphere. Like I was saying, we have African penguins. We have 13 total birds. We have eight males and five females. They range in age from seven months to 36 years old. So we have a wide range of ages. Um, as you can see, all of our penguins are behind us. One of our penguins might look a little bit on the scruffy side back there. She's actually molting. So what happens with these guys is they grow in all new feathers behind them and then drop all of the old feathers all at the same time. So it's kind of this big catastrophic event in their life. They drop all of them. They don't swim during that time, so they bulk up on their fish before that. And then they spend the rest of that time while they're molting on land while they're dropping all those feathers. Then once they're all done molting, they have a nice fresh set of those black and white feathers underneath them. You might also see a penguin that is gray behind us. She's our newest penguin. She is Harper and she's the one that's only seven months old. And she will keep those gray feathers for about the first year. Once she goes through her first molt, she'll end up black and white, just like everyone else. African penguins are endangered in the wild and their numbers have drastically declined in the last decade. They, the biggest threats to them in the wild are overfishing of their food source, oil spills, as well as competition for habitat. You'll learn more about how you can help these awesome birds throughout the episode. African penguins are a core of a lot of the education and conservation initiatives that we run here at the Racine Zoo. We are not only a part of the African Penguin SSP or Species Survival Plan with a lot of breeding efforts that we'll talk about a little bit later in this episode, 
But we are also a part of the public engagement movement through AZA's SAFE. AZA is the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, and SAFE is the initiative that's a few years old. SAFE stands for Saving Animals from Extinction. And the goal of SAFE is really to take all of the conservation efforts that zoos around the country are doing and target them and bring them together, focus on a single thing. And that is what we're trying to do right now with African penguins. Every year we hold an African Penguin Awareness Day where we try to raise awareness of our African penguins because a lot of people don't even realize that penguins are found in Africa. We also work with the Public Engagement Committee on something called the Artificial Nest Box, Box Project. The Artificial Nest Box Project is a project where we're trying to help replace some of the nesting sites that exist in Cape Town. A lot of people don't realize not only do African penguins live there and they face issues from oil spills, from overfishing, but they also face issues from people harvesting guano or seabird poop from the beaches. Seabird poop or guano is what these guys use to build nests and without it, it's very difficult for them to successfully raise chicks on the beach. So who knows what the best artificial nest box would look like for an African penguin? Definitely not us. We left this one to the birds. We actually deployed a lot of African penguin prototypes at zoos across the country through the SAFE program to decide what the best design would be before we started risking offspring in the wild. We then actually worked with other zoos as part of the Kickstarter campaign to actually raise the funding to put these nest boxes out in South Africa to help these birds. African penguins are a huge part of so much of the conservation work and education work we do here at the Racine Zoo. And that's why we're gonna so spend so much time today getting to know these amazing birds. My name is Heather Davidson. Um, I'm one of the relief keepers here at the Racine Zoo. Um, I started in the zoo field as an intern at Cincinnati, and then I did an internship at the Caldwell Zoo in Tyler, Texas as well. Um, and then I made my way here as a seasonal keeper, worked my way up to part-time, and now I'm full-time. Um, and one of the animals I get to work with are the penguins. Um, and we're gonna feed them breakfast this morning. So these guys get hand-fed three times a day. They are fed capelin. We do sometimes give smelt and herring for enrichment, but for most of the feedings, it's capelin. Um, we hand feed so that we can make sure everybody's getting a fish. It's also an easy way for us to get meds in them. Um, we just kind of stick the meds into the fish gill and then they swallow it right down without knowing that anything's in there. Um, we make sure everybody gets a few every feeding, but they can eat a very uh, wide range. Some of them only eat one to two a feeding, other can eat up to seven a feeding. Also depends if they're molting, in that case they do eat a lot, lot more. Everyone has their own way of how they choose to eat as well, they're very picky. Some of them like to have it held perpendicular and then kind of push it into their mouth. Others will take it only if it rests in their mouth for a second and then take it. Um, others will just shake their head until they decide that they want it. Um, but yeah, so three times a day is how much we feed these guys. We get to know who likes what very quickly. Um, along with feeding these guys, we take care of their exhibit and their um, indoor enclosure. This includes cleaning all the mats, cleaning all the floor, and making sure that the pool is clean as well. These guys poop a lot, and bird poop does seem to stain a lot more than regular poop, so we do have to scrub pretty hard for that. We also hose our exhibit at least twice a day, making sure we're getting all that poop out there. So in the wild, these guys will catch fish um, in, while they're swimming around. Here we don't tend to throw much fish in there. It's not the same effect because these fish are thawed, frozen and then thawed out, so they're not moving around. Some of them will go in to catch it. Um, they kind of dive under it and swim up and grab it in their mouths. But for the most part, we do hand feed. Um, we also toss fish to some of them because they prefer it that way. They'll catch it right in their mouth. 
Some of them only like particular fish, so some of them prefer male fish, some of them prefer female. Some of them will only take them if they're totally straight, so if they have any bend in them, they won't eat them. So they are very picky eaters, so getting to know how they eat and who eats what is a very important part of this job. Next, we're gonna talk about Harper, our newest African penguin chick here at the Racine Zoo. So like I said earlier, you can tell Harper apart from the other birds by her gray feathers that she has right now. And again, she'll lose those feathers in about a year, but for the next few months, we still get to see her in those cute gray feathers. So Harper hatched here on January 1st of 2019 to parents Robin and Linus. So the two, those two are ones with a thick blue band, or a thick red band, and a purple band. That is the only SSP recommended breeding pair that we have here at the Racine Zoo. So what that means is that SSP stands for Species Survival Plan. So all endangered species in zoos have to have a recommendation from the stud book and the stud book keepers to actually reproduce. So we aren't just able to make those decisions on our own. It's a decision that's made within the AZA organization and we then go through with those recommendations based on what we're able to accommodate. So we have Robin and Linus are our only SSP breeding pair here, and they were able to produce one chick last year. So what happens for us when we are in those breeding recommendations is we end up separating Robin and Linus from the rest of our birds, giving them their nice little own area with a nest box, nesting material, and giving them the opportunity to make those decisions and build their nest, and then reproduce if that is what seems like it's going to work for them. So generally with African penguins, the clutch size is either one to two eggs. The parent take turns incubating those eggs for roughly 36 days. And what we do throughout that time is we just make sure that the parents are being fed really well, that they're incubating the egg, taking turns like they should be. And then we also candle the egg. So what that means is we take the egg out, we use a bright flashlight and shine it through the shell of the egg. And you can actually see veins and the chick developing through the shell that way. So we do that every couple weeks to make sure that we we can see the chick, see development, and make sure that things are moving in the right direction. Then around that 36 day range, we generally check the egg a little bit more frequently so that we can make sure that if the chick is viable and developing the way it should, that the egg is, that the chick is able to come out of the shell on their own. Now they should be able to come out on their own with no help from us or from their parents, but sometimes some chicks have a little bit of difficulty. So through that hatching time, we generally check it more frequently so we can make sure that everything's going well. We can generally feel the chick moving in the egg. We can hear the chick peeping, and then eventually they'll make an internal pip as well as an external pip, which that, that means that they're breaking through the shell and starting to come out of that shell. That whole process from when the chick does the internal pip to when it actually comes out can be anywhere from one to three days. So it's a very long time for us keepers who are checking on that egg and making sure that everything's going well. That kind of takes a long time. Once the chick is out, we check it and make sure that he, the chick looks great. We weigh it and then we also will give it back to the parents and let them continue raising it. A lot of times with birds and with penguins in particular, it's hard for us to check on the bird all the time because he's tucked up underneath the parents inside that nest box. So a lot of times we're just waiting to hear vocalization, waiting to see the parents feed it and kind of making sure that everything's going well that way. We weigh the chick every couple days in the beginning and they can actually double their weight within the first few days. So they gain weight really fast. And then once they reach about four months old, they get their adult feathers like Harper looks right now. And then they're able to take a swim and that's about Roughly the time that Harper went out for the first time on exhibit here was about when she was four months old. In the last four years here at the Racine Zoo, we've been able to have three chicks, all from parents Robin and Linus, and we're happy to be able to contribute to this awesome species. So in AZA facilities, animals get to have access to some of the top vet care. Uh, this also includes keepers getting eyes on them, checking them out every day, multiple times a day. So we can easily tell when an animal's not feeling well, whether they have a scrape, they're swollen, they're just acting a little off, anything along those lines. 
Because of this, that means that a lot of these animals in human care are able to live a lot longer than their wild counterparts. Uh, so in the wild, African penguins can live anywhere from 20 to 25, um, and in human care they can get up to 30. We have one penguin here that's doing a lot better than that. So Blue Yellow is going to be 36 this year. She came here in 1992 and has been here since. Uh, she did have one chick of her own and then fostered another chick as well, so she's definitely helped with repopulating her population. Um, you can see her on exhibit. Uh, you can tell her apart because her band is yellow with blue tape on it. Um, she also has a little bit of a bump on her nose, so you can tell that from her beak is different than everyone else's. Uh, she is a little curious. She likes to kind of hang around keepers, check out what they're doing, be around our feet. She gets along with everybody on exhibit. Um, we did notice a few years ago that she was having some problems with balance. So she does get two supplements. She gets meloxicam and vitamin E to help with that. But other than that, she's still doing great and has many more years to live. All creatures in our oceans are important to us, and that's one of the reasons that we also partner with the Sea Turtle Conservancy here at the zoo. Every year we have a Reptile and Amphibian Awareness Day where we talk about a lot of different species of reptiles, and we also talk about sea turtles. There are five species of sea turtles that can be found off the coast of the United States, and believe it or not, four out of five of them are threatened, um, and most of them are actually endangered. So we want to make sure that we teach people about these animals, even if they may not be here in Wisconsin, so that we can get people excited about taking care of them. The Racine Zoo also adopts a sea turtle from the Sea Turtle Conservancy every year, and that supports not just uh, things that help keep sea turtles safe in the wild, but it also helps support research on sea turtles to make sure that they're kept safe and so that we can learn more about what areas are best to protect to help them reproduce. We also find it very important to educate people who may not realize that sea turtles are in trouble. Unfortunately, a lot of sea turtles and sea turtle artifacts end up confiscated by the Fish and Wildlife Department, like this sea turtle right here. But we try to take those objects and repurpose them into education artifacts so that we can educate people about these animals, even if we don't have them around here. From storks to penguins to bears, it takes a lot of fish to feed all the animals here at the Racine Zoo. And this is where it's at. This is our freezer full of fish that we're going to feed out to our animals. And we get it in in huge orders. But it's also really important to us, as all aspects of the zoo are, to make sure that we are making good and sustainable choices with our fish. We've actually worked with our different vendors of all of our fish to make sure that they are all caught domestically. So all of the fish that we feed out here at the Racine Zoo is caught here in North America and make sure that it is all sustainably sourced. We want to make sure not just that it's domestically caught, but that we're selecting species like these Kaplan that are sustainable species so that we can protect protect the future of our fisheries around the world, and that they're caught in sustainable ways that avoid trawling on the bottom of the ocean or damaging ecosystems while collecting the fish. Just like you, we want to make sure all of you guys make sustainable choices when you're sitting down to eat seafood, we make sure that when we're serving up our food to our animals, we're making sustainable choices as well. We work hard to be stewards of all of our life, not just here in the Great Lakes, but in our oceans as well. And that's one of the reasons that we became a partner of the Seafood Watch program. Seafood Watch is a program that's been around for years and years that began at the Monterey Bay Aquarium in California. The point of Seafood Watch is to educate consumers, zoo and aquarium visitors on what fish they're eating and what's sustainable and what's not. And it's super easy. Seafood Watch has an app that you can download on your phone that you can utilize to check if what you're ordering is a sustainable choice or not. And we actually have here at the zoo our own Seafood Watch brochures that have giant lists of a lot of the common fish that you can find in restaurants that can help you make sustainable choices. This is so important because there are huge issues with overfishing that affect fisheries and fish populations and populations in the water. But all of that affects the entire ecosystem and can trickle up to 
things that affect humans as well. A lot of people believe that because we're so far away from our oceans that we can't have any impact on the health of our sea life in our oceans, but really everybody can make a difference. And Seafood Watch isn't just for seafood. You can actually also get guides on your app to some of the animals and some of the fish that you can find in our Great Lakes. Anyone who loves fishing should really check out Seafood Watch. And this is one of the reasons that we have so many events throughout the year where we talk about sustainable seafood and our Seafood Watch program to get more and more people involved. If you don't want to have an app everywhere just when you go out to order fish, ask the restaurant where it came from. Sometimes a lot of places haven't even been asked that question before. And just by asking the question, you can start the conversation conversation and start people thinking about sustainability in their choices. This is one of the reasons that zoos exist, to motivate people to make more positive choices for themselves and for the environment. Hi, my name is Elise Olmsted. I'm one of the educators in the Racine Zoo. Um, I started my career as a animal science major at the University of Illinois. Um, while I was there, I was a veterinary assistant for two years. I also um, volunteered at the Wildlife Medical Center. So I got a lot of medical um, background. And then I moved up north to the Chicago area and introduced myself to the Racine Zoo as an intern. I absolutely fell in love with conservation education during my internship. Uh, I was hired part-time as a part-time educator. I continued to fall in love with the field and eventually was hired full-time as our AmeriCorps program coordinator in October of 2018. Now we at the Racine Zoo are so lucky to be situated so closely to the Great Lakes. We sit right along the coast of Lake Michigan and we definitely use this resource to our advantage. We have a lot of different educational programs here at the Racine Zoo, whether it's our preschool group where we bring preschool age students down here to get their feet wet. We also bring families here to enjoy the beach um, and we bring students down here to sing through the water to figure out what they can find or identify shells to figure out what different kind of organisms live in this gigantic body of water. It is very important to us to teach our students about the importance of the Great Lakes. Now the Great Lakes are an important resource because Lake, or the Great Lakes hold one-fifth of the planet's sitting fresh water. Um, so that is 20% of the entire planet's drinkable fresh water is in the Great Lakes right behind me. Additionally, 95% of North America's fresh water comes from the Great Lakes. If you were to spread all of the water located in the Great Lakes over the entire continent of North America, everyone would be standing in five-foot deep water. That is an incredible amount of water and something that is very, very very important to conserve. The Great Lakes hosts so many different kinds of animal species um, and habitat regions that you can't find anywhere else on our planet. So this resource is definitely one that we are passionate about pr uh, protecting. I myself visited Lake Michigan every single summer. It is near and dear to my heart. And that is something that I'm really passionate about bringing to our community students. AmeriCorps program coordinator at the Racine Zoo, one program that we are developing for seventh graders next year is the Guardians of the Great Lakes program. Now this program is going to bring our community students to the Great Lakes. We're going to teach them about different kinds of conservation messages such as the effects of invasive species, the effects of climate change, on the impacts of pollution and of human development on this incredibly important resource. And it's definitely something that I'm very excited to be bringing to our community students. My name is Paul Miller. I'm an animal care specialist here at the Racine Zoo. One of my responsibilities here at the zoo is caring for our African cichlid tank behind me. Um, cichlids are a species of fish. Uh, our cichlids in particular are all from Lake Malawi. Lake Malawi is one of the Great Rift Lakes in Central Africa. There are three lakes that make up the Great Rift Lake System. Uh, it's one of the largest uh, lake systems in the world. Um, they're unique in the amount of biodiversity that can be found in these lakes. Uh, lake Malawi alone is home to over 850 different species of cichlid, only two of which uh, can be found anywhere else in the world. Lake Malawi is about 11,000 square miles in area, making it smaller than most of our North American Great Lakes, but at a depth of 2,000 feet, it's uh, almost twice as deep as any deepest point in uh, any of the American Great Lakes. Um, our particular cichlids are all Mabuna 
cichlids, which just means rock cichlids. Uh, this particular type of cichlid uh, feeds primarily on algae. Um, they live mostly along the rocky coasts of the lake, uh, where there are lots of places to hide and an abundance of food. Um, here at the zoo, we're gonna try to replicate their uh, wild diet by feeding them whole pellet foods. Um, most whole pellets are a mixture of um, fish meal as well as algae to replicate their natural diet. Um, we have about 10 different species here at the zoo. The majority of them are peacock cichlids. Um, a lot of these guys are younger. Um, as they age up, they're gonna develop some uh, striking colors, a lot of blues and a lot of reds giving them their name. Daily care on this tank involves mostly um, water changes and maintaining uh, chemical levels. Um, we're looking to keep things like ammonia and nitrate levels low while also keeping the pH relatively uh, low as well and um, temperatures at about 80 degrees. These guys are tropical after all. From Lake Michigan to the oceans, from Lake Malawi to our African penguins in Cape Town, South Africa, what an amazing experience today. But remember, we have to be stewards of this planet, whether it is our natural uh, flora and fauna, and especially our oceans and our lakes. All of our waterways are incredibly important for this earth to remain healthy. It's up to you to help take care of the waterways for us. Make sure you come to the Racine Zoo, 2131 North Main Street, just north of downtown Racine, and we will see you at the Racine as well as the next episode of Racine Zoo to you.